What's up, guys? Paul here from Hashtag Sports. I uh, wanted to touch base quickly because there's been a lot of rumors about the uh, or around the Bills going out to try and acquire Giants defensive tackle Dalvin Tomlinson. And I wanted to talk through that a little bit because it's been a name that's been out there quite a bit. Uh, and we've seen that name through a bunch of different articles throughout the, you know, Hashtag Bills Mafia content creators. Um, so... Let's walk through that a little bit and talk about how realistic it is, because when you start unpacking some of the stuff that you may not have known about Dalvin Tomlinson, I'm not thinking the Bills are going to snag him, but let me tell you why. When talking about Dalvin Tomlinson, you're talking about, uh, first off, a a really outstanding uh, athlete. Right, you don't you don't start at Alabama uh, at defensive tackle without being an outstanding athlete. So we're looking at the 55th overall pick back in 2017, the second round pick by the Giants. Um, 26 years old and really a wrecker, right? If you want to talk about a player who could come in and play instantaneously for you, Delvin Tomlin Delvin Tomlinson really does fit that mold. Um, from a contract standpoint, he's entering the last year of his deal, which is probably why his name has come up so often around Bill's mafia circles, because the truth of the matter is the Giants are going nowhere and they're getting there pretty quick. So why hold on to a player who's entering the final year of his deal that, you know, he hasn't, the Giants haven't really been successful since he's been there. So what's the reason for him to want to stay? Uh, what, what's the, what's enticing about him staying? The Giants could trade him. And then if he really is interested in returning to the Giants, he'll be a free agent next off season. So you could just, you know, try and re-sign him at that point. Uh, why not go ahead and try and get some capital for him while you can? Not necessarily a player. I think the Giants are looking, uh, obviously more towards that draft capital because that's really what makes the most sense for them, right? If you start looking at trying to trade for a player, they're going to have to trade for a player with multiple years left on their deal. They're going to have to take on that salary cap and in a contract negotiated by another team. Is that something that they really want to do? I can't say that I'm real comfortable saying the Giants are in a position to want to take a player for player deal because, again, I don't think they're they're at a point where acquiring an existing talent makes the most sense for them. They they are kind of in a in a mode of. Uh, shedding some of those older contracts, shedding some of those older players and trying to rebuild. Um, And I don't really think trading for another player makes the most sense for them because of that theory that's typically used when you're rebuilding a team. So draft capital makes the most sense. This is to say nothing of Dalvin Tomlinson, the player. The player's outstanding. Um, The defensive tackle position is kind of rough to, you know, equate stats to because they, they typically don't have a ton of tackles. You know, if you see like 60 tackles from a defensive tackle, that's kind of like, oh, all right. You, know, you have to start looking at sacks and you see like four sacks from a defensive tackle. You go, oh, okay. All right. So this is somebody that does get into the backfield. Uh, Dalvin Thompson has six career sacks across four seasons so far. Um, but what you can look at is snap percentage. And that's sort of a, a telling tale with the bills they have a pretty hardy defensive tackle rotation that they use but it's been a little bit lighter in the more recent games but Dalton tomlinson has never played more than 65 percent of snaps and that's actually this year he's playing the most uh, prior to that the most he'd ever played was 57 percent of snaps he's never missed an nfl game um so he's been a very durable player for the giants and again he's you know when you take a look at his tackle numbers uh 50 tackles 59 tackles 49 tackles he's got 30 this year not counting the game on sunday so a very, very functional, uh, dependable player at the defensive tackle position. That absolutely would be a, a benefit for Buffalo to go out and get. Here's why they're not going to trade for Dalvin Tomlinson. And it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with Brandon Bean. It doesn't have anything to do with Sean McDermott. And I, I know there are a lot of people out there who are going to say that Bean sometimes looks apprehensive to give up future compensation for rental talent, right? We've never seen him do it. In this case, Dalvin Tomlinson is a rental player. You're going to go out and acquire him, but for what? You're going to go out and acquire him for 10, 9, 10 games. You know, hopefully 12 (laughs) if you're going to the Super Bowl, right? So you're going to go out there and you're going to acquire him for a series of games, but that's going to be it. Um, After that, whatever capital you gave up for him is going to be next year if it's draft capital, which is most likely what you would give up for him. So you're going to give up a drafted player the following year for a player that you're probably not going to be able to resign. The Bills are really kind of tight across the defensive tackle line. Um, And, you know, hopefully you have Starlet Tulele coming back. I can't believe those words just came out of my mouth. Hopefully you get Starlet Tulele back next season. 
So with that, do you really need Dalvin Tomlinson? Uh, there's an argument to be made that you could always make improvements, especially since Ed Oliver hasn't been as disruptive in that role as you're really hoping. Dalvin Tomlinson gives you the opportunity to kind of, you know, get a little bit of mulligan on that. But he's about to get a lot more expensive. We're looking at probably close to an eight and a half to ten million dollar player in the open market. Um, you know, he, he, definitely a Jordan Phillips type contract. Although Jordan Phillips' contract was a little short sighted, um, as in Arizona could get out of it a little earlier than I think what Dalvin Tomlinson is really uh, what he'd be comfortable taking. Um, but if you take a look at what his value is going to be out of the free agent market, a salary cap could go down next year, which could impact it, but you're probably looking at a near $10 million player. And could the Bills get him for a third-round pick? All day. All day the Bills could get him for a third-round pick. Now, again, the argument can be made that Brandon Bean doesn't like to give up future uh, future prospects for current value, um, at least in the short term on a rental. <clears throat> when they did it with Calvin Benjamin, Calvin Benjamin had a fifth-year option that was exercised. Um, you know, we did it with Stevon Diggs, and he, he Stevon Diggs was on a four-year deal. So we, we haven't seen him do it yet, uh, is my point. <clears throat> However, I don't think that really impacts here. So you have Jason Garrett as the head coach of the Giants right now. And, and Garrett's been around for a long time in the NFL. Uh, so quick edit. Uh, big thanks to Apex00, uh, who saw the members preview of this. If you're not a member of uh, the Hashtag Heroes, uh, that is our foundation uh, where we take all the membership fees that we get uh, through that join button that you see down there. Um, and we don't, we're don't. we donating right now until the end of the year. 100% of all of those proceeds go to Brian Mormon's Punt Foundation. So if you're not a member, go ahead and join. Because you get previews on all the episodes if you're part of the 55-man roster and up. Well, Apex is one of them. Uh, he's actually one of our Hall of Fame members. And he mentioned to me that I was talking about Jason Garrett as, uh, in, in the context that he was the head coach of the Giants because I kind of forgot that uh, they hired a former special teams coordinator as their head coach. Judge is actually head coach of the uh, New York Giants. So big thank you to Apex for catching that. I, I just forgot about him, honestly. I, I just forgot about him. Uh, so there's going to be a couple edits throughout the rest of this video while I kind of clean up some of the points that I'm making. Uh, so thank you to Apex. And if you haven't joined Hashtag Heroes, where you can see me make all these ridiculous screw-ups uh, early, you, uh, you can hit that join button. Uh, he's, he's had a very successful head coaching career, and nowadays with the Giants, I think he understands the dynamic of what it takes in a locker room. Now, Dalvin Tomlinson is a Boy Scout. He is everything that you want in a football player. He is respected by the players. He's respected by the coaches. And again, he's still on his rookie deal. So right now for Buffalo, he's very affordable, right? He's not going to cost you near anything as far as the salary cap's concerned. But again, he's just a rental at this point. Um and maybe you get him in, and, and with a winning culture, he sees what uh, winning looks like because he hasn't. And um, you know, maybe that's enticing for him to want to stay. Uh, maybe not at ten million dollars. Maybe at eight. Maybe at seven and a half. Right? Maybe that's what winning looks like to him. In any case, Jason Garrett's been around long enough to know not to let go of good players, uh, but not just necessarily because you know that the Giants are not going to be able to resign Delvin Tomlinson. It does make sense to try and get rid of him. Here's the reason why Dalvin Tomlinson will not be traded by the Giants. Not just to Buffalo, but he won't be traded, period. Jason Garrett's been around long enough to know a sinking ship when he's on it. And the Giants are a sinking ship. But it's not of his making. This is kind of the table that was set for him when he got the job. Dalvin Tomlinson is the player's representative for the Players Association. right? He is who represents his players to the Players Association. He's the Giants rep. That says a lot about a kid who's still on his rookie deal. When I said Dalvin Tomlinson was a Boy Scout, I'm not kidding. This is a, this is he is everything you would want in your locker room, right? He's he's all reports. This is a good dude and a player that the Bills would want to target. But on a sinking ship, you're going to trade your player association representative for future picks. Since Garrett is in the Giants organization, and he's been around as a former head coach in a very volatile environment down in Dallas, the fact is he knows better than to allow a team that he is a part of to make a move like that, at least from a coaching standpoint. Garrett is there to give Judge help at this point, and he needs to give him guidance to say, listen, you can't allow 
uh, your player representative to be kicked or punted out of your building for future compensation. This is the wrong foot to get you started on. Now, of course, the point could be made that Garrett doesn't need to give that information, and you're absolutely right. He doesn't uh, because this is on the opposite side of a football than what he needs to concern himself with. But one of the reasons that you put former head coaches on your staff is to help you walk through these decisions that perhaps you didn't have control over before and knowledge told you or experience told you that this isn't the best way to move forward. And while Dalvin Tomlinson makes a lot of sense on paper, because absolutely he does, 100% as a player, I would love the Bills to go out and get. I just don't see the Giants being able to make the deal for him. And it's not that he isn't going to uh, procure value. He absolutely would. But you have to weigh whether that third round pick that you're going to get for him uh, is really worth the locker room damage that it's going to do if you can, uh, if you force the players to not trust their leadership. And I think that's kind of where this goes, right? The players have to trust their leadership. They may not be a winning team. They may be frustrated with their performance, but they still need to trust the leadership. When McDermott got here, uh, that was another thing. It was about trusting the leadership. It wasn't about the record. It was about trusting the leadership. And even though they got to the playoffs in McDermott's first year, that second year, again, was about trusting the leadership, even though things didn't go very well. It's these are the ones that you have to take. The Giants are in that downward spiral and they're not getting out of it anytime soon. And, and you know, eight more games out of Dalvin Tomlinson is not really going to help them. But it's going to do a lot of damage if they get rid of him. And Garrett's been around long enough to know that. And if Dalvin Tomlinson gets dealt, it is a very, very wrong move for that that organization. Do I think that they have what it takes to be a winning franchise? They don't. Do I think the Bills have what it takes to be a winning franchise? Well, in the building right now, absolutely they do. Does Dalvin Tomlinson make a ton of sense for them? Sure does. Does Dalvin Tomlinson make sense for them next offseason? I think there's an argument to be made that he would be a great target for them. But again, you're looking at paying him Jordan Phillips money, and, and you didn't give Jordan Phillips Jordan Phillips money, so are you going to give Dalvin Tomlinson Jordan Phillips money? I think Dalvin Tomlinson is that level of player. I do. You put him in with Star. Uh, along with Oliver and Phillips, who will still be on a rookie deal. Yeah, I, I think all that makes a lot of sense. It does. But you're not getting them via trade. And I know it's going to break the hearts of a lot of folks, but you have to understand that a lot of times these trades aren't just about the X's and O's. They're about the dollars, the cents, and the people inside the locker room and the faith that you have to have in your leadership. And you can't let a player who is in, as influential in that locker room to be dealt unless it is of absolute necessity. J.J. Watt, different story. Player People will look at that and say, they're trying to get J.J. Watt to a winner. They're doing it in his best interest. Players will accept that, even though J.J. Watt is of paramount importance to the Texans organization as a whole. He's the face of the franchise and has been for a long time. Even if J.J. Watt were to get dealt, they're going to deal him to a, to a team and give him an opportunity to try and win. That's the way it's going to look. This guy's on a rookie deer deal in Dalvin Tomlinson, and that is not the way it's going to look if he gets dealt by the New York Giants. While it may be true, maybe you really enjoy him as a person. You want to give him the opportunity to try and go win before he hits free agency? You go ahead. You could try and frame it that way, but that is not the way it's going to look, and that's not the way that it's going to go, and the player's going to resent it. So is that really what you want to do if you're the Giants? It's not worth it for a third-round pick. It's not. And the Bills would be foolish to give up anything more. As great a player as he is, it's not going to happen. Paul from Hashtag. Have a good one, guys.